At what cost do you force an eviction in residential aged care? Let's talk. Hi, welcome to HUGE Today. I'm Kelly Oliver. And today I want to talk about evictions in aged care. Um, currently, there's been a lot of aged care facilities closing down due to the 24-7 RN rule that has been implemented across aged care. Now, the stories that I've been reading recently, especially one um, where it's, it's just atrocious of how they're treating the residents in this particular home and the reasons why they're looking at evicting or trying to evict, even though they're saying they're not evicting, um, the residents in that home and what they're doing to um, to force, what I call force an eviction on these particular residents. So we'll go to the first is um, the update from the actual facility itself. And then there's some news articles uh, where the residents have spoken out um, on their battle with this particular provider. So the provider itself is Ferros Care, so Ferros Village in Byron Bay. So their update on their website was, the Ferros Care Board has made the difficult decision to close and redevelop Ferros Village, Byron Bay. We understand any sadness or distress the residents feel in having to move to a new home, along with the sense of loss felt in the wider community. Redevelopment is our best option to remain in the community for the seniors in a new way. Ferros Village, Byron Bay, was designed and built as a low-care hostel 33 years ago. It simply cannot meet modern obligations and requirements for residential aged care. We can deeply, we care deeply about our residents and are looking, and are working with them to ensure they find new homes of their choice. True to our founder, George Ferros, we have always been in a visionary organisation. We look forward to working with the local community in co-design to meet the needs of Byron Bay seniors in on the same site in a new and innovative way. Hmm. So that's a little bit frustrating for me because they talk about redevelopment, they talk about co-design, they talk about the best way to service the community. Well, these people are part of the community and if they can put finances into redevelopment, and co-design with the community, why can't they co-design and redevelop with the current residents that are living there? That's my biggest concern. Um, and, you know, putting forward an eviction date for them would cause a lot of stress. You know, no one needs stress at any age, but these poor residents are needing, um, and are getting stress, not needing stress, but um, unfortunately are under stress to move, um, which is really unfair. Um, because a facility wants to change what they do in the community and how they service the community. But have they asked everybody in the community? That's the question that I ask. So um, we're gonna to go to this particular article next. Um, and this is where some of the residents have spoken out. So Byron Bay aged care home residents win another round in battle to stay put. Like I think whenever it's got there that the residents win, I think is fantastic. And when I first started reading these, it was putting a smile on my face to think that these residents um, have a voice they're able to stand up for themselves and and talk about what they want and really put their foot down and say this is what I want but at what cost you know there's stress that's happening um you know and not everyone is able to do that and not everyone has family um to be able to help them and back them up so we're going to go through and it's going to talk a little bit more about that as we go through these articles in relation to this particular home um, so there may be more, they may be more comfortable sitting, but stubborn residents appear to have won another round in their standoff with an aged care provider in New South Wales, North Coast. Um, so Ferros told the 10 residents still living at the Byron Bay Retirement Village that services would cease on Wednesday, but they have now been told that there will be no evictions. Okay, so no evictions. We all think that's great. Let's keep reading and you'll see that it's a little bit of a different story. It's not just no evictions at all. Um, the news left 95-year-old Kate Smorty in a bullish mood. I just sort of feel sorry for the people who are trying to move us out because we're staying. There are a lot of people who have moved out who are looking forward to moving back in. It was the second time the residents had been called at, 
it called the bluff of the facility operator um, who originally set the deadline for June 23. That was pushed back to July 19 when it became obvious that some of the residents were refusing to move, which I totally understand. It's their home. Uh, they chose to live there. It was meant to be their forever home. And now they're being uprooted or trying to be uprooted to somewhere where they don't know where they're going or what they're doing. A lawyer representing the residents, Byron Shire councillor Mark Swivel, said they now have the upper hand in the dispute. I really hope that they do. Ferros, as landlord, has a serious problem, he said, because you've got 10 people who don't want to move because they love where they live and because of how they have been treated. They want the good facility to remain as an asset for the community for the next generation and beyond. Now, Ferros's update talked about, you know, working with the local community and co-designing some new type of um, facility for seniors um, but these people are part of that local community. So why haven't they been included in that? And why, again, why can't they redevelop and co-design this particular facility and keep it running so these people can stay? Like, why do, uh, hmm. So Ferros Care has a license to continue operating the village until May next year. So May next year, but they tried to evict them in February of this year. Well, they gave them notice in February and ever since then they've been trying to um, encourage them to move while they can still operate until May next year. But says he's unable to meet the complex regulation requirements under law for aged care at a facility that was built more than 30 years ago. I've worked in facilities that are older than 30 years and they're still running strong. So yeah, no, that doesn't cut it with me. So the statement that they issued was um, Ferros Care Byron Bay Village is scheduled to close July 19th as it no longer meets the government requirements of a residential aged care facility. However, due to the refusal of residents to leave the facility within the time frame and our commitment as a charity to the safety and well-being of residents, just remember that charity, safety and well-being of residents, we will continue to operate but not indefinitely. The statement said Ferros Care's priority was to support the remaining residents to make decisions in their best interest to ensure their current and future care needs are met. Well, it's not sounding like that to me. It's not sounding like that they are supporting them to make decisions in their best interest because for them, their decisions in their best interest is to stay put, stay in their home where they are and where they're comfortable. About 30 residents have moved out and found somewhere else to live since closure plans were announced in February. Mick Eddings, who is one of the remaining 10 residents, has no intention of following their lead. They won't close down. They can't do that, he said. Someone else might take over, but the place will keep going. There's no doubt about that. So, yeah, best interest. No, I don't think so. We'll move on to the next one. Um, where there's a little bit more information on what is happening. So in this one, it says that a New South Wales council is considering taking over a retirement home site amidst a battle between a group of seniors and their care provider over its proposed closure. So originally dubbed the Tenacious 10, nine residents remain in the Byron Bay home, refusing any push from Ferros to move out. So it's gone from 10 to nine now. The provider said the facility had to close because it no longer met the federal government's higher requirements for residential aged care. Okay, well, we'll see if that is true. Ferros Care Chief Executive Karen Crouch said AAP, the Aged Care Act, obligated the organisation to guarantee a resident would not need to move elsewhere if they needed a higher level of care over time, such as increased nursing attention. We cannot provide the full spectrum of care required without compromising the safety and quality of care. Like it sounds legit. You know, it sounds like they have a reason, but do they? The residents say that they have not been offered suitable or affordable alternative accommodation and enjoyed living there. The home was slated to close on Wednesday, but due to the refusal of the residents to leave, it will continue to operate, but not indefinitely. Byron Shire councillor and lawyer Mark, who is acting for those affected, said the residents remained in limbo despite Ferros Care saying it wouldn't evict them. That's right, because they said 
but not indefinitely. So where do they stand, right? Feral's Care announced the closure in February and was required to help residents find alternative accommodation before the site could shut the doors. Ms Couch Crouch said the small group of remaining residents have refused help and didn't respond to written offers to support a move. Well, because they don't want to move. And I guess the reason that's been given to them is not good enough for them. Byron Shire Mayor Michael Loyne accused the organisation of changing its story to suit its goals. We've all doubted the story that Ferros was feeding us from the start around the finances. They passed a recent audit on what they were required to provide in terms of care. So they're saying that they can't meet the regulatory requirements, but they've actually just passed an audit that says that they are able to provide the required care. Okay, so there's a bit of doubt there in their story. So it doesn't mean that to be anything indicating a massive overhaul of facilities is required. But again, even if it did, they're redeveloping. They want to co-design with the local community. That's what they keep saying. So why can't they do that with the residents that are there and update the facilities that's currently there to support the client, the clients, the residents that are living there at the moment or that were living there? Why move them out? Mr. Crouch said the decision was not financially motivated. Okay, so they're saying it's not financially motivated. They're trying to say that it's a regulatory requirement issue, but obviously not because they've just met their audit. Veros is considering plans to redevelop the site into affordable seniors accommodation, but has not submitted an application. Again, affordable seniors accommodation, why can't they just put that money into leaving it as a facility, an aged care facility? I do not understand why they want to upset residents, put more stress on them, expect them to move and find another place that they love just as much as what they love their current home, which again is their home, you know, to do affordable seniors accommodation. Yep, okay. So the facility is on Crown land, which would need approval from government to be redeveloped. The local government will consider development proposals, but the mayor said the council is also looking at whether to take over management of the site. If Ferros continues to not meet the expectations of our community, then we're looking for at alternatives and that might be an alternative provider with the council as the Crown Land Manager. Okay, so they're saying that they want to meet the community's needs, but then this um, the mayor is saying that if Ferros continues to not meet the expectations of the community, then they'll be looking at alternatives. The home was constructed 33 years ago as a low care hostel, which Ferros said was not designed or built to the standards and requirements of a residential aged care site. So then change it so it does meet the standards, although they did pass their audit. It just gets more and more interesting as we go along. So in this one, now there's only nine remaining residents at the Ferros um, village in Byron Bay and they're still battling to stay put. So the nine remaining elderly residents of an aged care home slated to close might not look up for a fight but vow that they're not going anywhere. By the numbers it's a grim yet determined picture. On the anniversary of the region's worst ever flood 40 elderly residents of the North Coast aged care home were told that they would have to find new places to stay. Six of those who have moved on have since passed away. You know, and that's a, such a short period of time and I really hope that stress didn't contribute to, to that. Um, one resident, Jason, took his own life after allegations he was pressured to leave the village. I really... I really hope that that isn't the case. I really hope that that statement is an off-the-cuff statement and not a real one because otherwise Ferros have a lot to answer for. That's terrible. So 25 residents were relocated. Now there are just nine left and they refuse to be driven from their homes. Roy, Janet, Joan, Peggy, Jason and Nina have all passed away said Marie Edding, 
whose dad Michael is one of the stubborn nine hanging tight in the village. They moved the most vulnerable out first, the ones that had no family. No family, people who don't have any support, don't have any guidance. They just move them out first, what, because it's easier? Veros really have a lot to answer for in this particular situation. They told him that they had to go because bulldozers are coming in tomorrow. Now, that was a lie. Retired publican Bernie Dean, 80, said the whole ordeal stresses her to the max. <clears throat> I can't even begin to imagine the stress that these people are under. You don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next, she said. We found out today, July 25, that the guy that comes to clean our rooms is now only going to be here two days a week. He's usually here six days a week. Now, okay, no eviction. They said no eviction, but it's not indefinite. But now they're trying to force it by taking away cleaning services. They used to come six days a week and now they come two. If this is not a forced eviction, I don't know what else you can call it. Ms. Dean, who ran the Captain Cook pub in Paddington, said, Sydney said, she tries to remain resolute in order to support her fellow residents. She said, Feros, the operation, operators of the home, told them that they would close the facility in February, then March, June, and now July. They keep trying to push us out. Well, take away cleaning services is, is one intimidation factor. The group said it is the niggly things which have rattled them, like re reducing the cleaning services, cancelling activity staff, removing on-site doctors, canning Netflix, and rerouting the town bus grocery trip to Bangalore instead of downtown Byron Bay. Why? Byron Bay have a larger supermarket than Bangalore. Bangalore is a, is a lovely town. Um, and I think it has like a like an IGA style um, supermarket. But Byron Bay has the larger supermarkets, which the residents would be able to get everything they need at um, a lower cost. Um, Again, it is this a push? Cancel cleaning services, remove activity staff so they can't do anything, um, and remove on-site doctors. So that then puts more pressure on them to actually go and book an appointment, wait for an appointment, because I know in the far north coast it's very hard to get appointments straight away. Sometimes you're waiting weeks for an appointment at a GP. Um, canning Netflix and rerouting their grocery bus trip. They told me I'm going to Bangalore. I said, I'm not going to Bangalore. You can't make me. So how is she meant to do a shopping? They would tell me I'm going to, uh, residents and their families are distraught that Feros has not identified suitable accommodation as per their requirements under the residential contracts. As an example, Bangalore Feros, where they say the residents can move in is institutional aged care setting that is not suitable for these residents. Ms. Edding said. Bangalore is a mixed care, high care dementia facility that has had non-compliance against the facility since October 2022. <sighs> non-compliance. That really irks me. The most recent audit assessment in May 2023 has resulted in another non-compliance. Based on the staff not being trained to be able to manage this level of mixed care, the residents know this is not suitable environment and will not and will not force to be institutionalized. So again, another audit assessment for the Bangalore village or Bangalore home, whatever they call it, um, in May 2023, very recently, has resulted in a non-compliance. I think I'm going to need to look into that one because that's just terrible. And then to think that they're trying to push these residents into the 
a facility that's non-compliant when they're already in a facility that is compliant because they want to change it to more suitable, affordable senior accommodation. Henning Jensen 87 was allowed to sign up to Ferros Village after the announcement of intention to close was made. Why would they do that? Why would they allow someone to sign up to then tell them that they can't be there? It's unfair. It is unfair. Very unfair. He has taken legal action against the care provider over the issue and the predicament he is in now. The retired TV technician said he will stick with it until the end. <clears throat> Um, as he, like fellow residents, have no alternative accommodation to go to. And it is hard. It is really hard in the far north coast um, to find good quality care. Um, and more facilities are closing. You know, and it's one thing, like, that's what we do for a living. Um, we vet facilities for our clients. We help them match up to facilities that can best um, meet their needs in their health and social well-being, and and it's it's hard to find facilities to match that, and that are compliant, and that will provide everything that is required. So for a resident and their family to have to go through that and try and find that out, like the My Age Care website is is atrocious. It doesn't tell you anything. Um, it is not a hundred percent accurate. It's only updated every three months. So you can never get a true picture of a facility. So how are these people meant to find a facility, especially under that time frame that they've been given? It's just, it's unacceptable. And like I said, Ferros has a lot to answer for. Ferros cited the decision to close the Byron Bay facility was not made evaded by financial imperatives, which we've already heard, we've already read, and we know that. So put the... Put the money into the facility that's there, not a redevelopment. The Ferros Byron Bay Village, you know, Byron Village, was um, specifically designed 33 years ago to meet the requirements of a low care hostel, but the distinction between high and low care no longer exists. Um, Mark said that the Ferros property sits on Crown land and they haven't had to pay rent for 36 years. So they're running an organisation, they haven't had to pay rent for 36 years of the 33 years that they've had this facility there and they can't even keep it open and redevelop it to suit the residents that are living there. The village should remain in community hands. Ferros can keep it Ferros can keep it that way or let someone else do it, he said. He said Ferros invoked aging in place obligations as the reason for closing. But this is policy aspiration, not a specific legal obligation. The Royal Commission findings endorses places like Ferros Village, and it did, yes, um, a small-scale, non-institutional home, which is what aged care really should be about. It's about making it a home, living in it like a home, with the medical care required. It doesn't need to be institutional-like at all. So 92-year-old Sybil um, Redden got the shock of her life when told she'd have to find somewhere else to live in February. Working her entire life at a parent's business in New Zealand, um, she said she couldn't be exposed to just, she wouldn't be expected to just up and leave after living at Ferros Village for four and a half years. She said she felt very awful after learning that Ferros intended to close. After being here for a few years, you're not going to get up and change it. I got the biggest shock of my life. You don't know what you're going to do after that, but we ho we're hoping for the best. I really hope for the best for them too, because this is just tragic. You know, moving is stressful for anybody, but when you've thought that you've found your forever home and then you have to move, um, or that you're being told that they're not going to evict you, but then they'll remove all the services to push you to go. I think it's atrocious, absolutely atrocious. So she feels like everything is going along okay so far. I'd like to see things end that way um, and we're all back here again. 
Originally from Melbourne, lifelong trucker, 80-year-old Michael Mike Eddings said he was very disappointed in Ferros. I think everyone should be disappointed in Ferros. He said Ferros had reduced cleaning services and no longer provided an on-site doctor. I think that Anna Wells needs to, or Annika Wells, needs to jump in here um, and do something about that because that's terrible. I've been out to have a look at a few other places and he said you wouldn't put your dog in them. And there are places like that. Absolutely. I've I've come across a lot of those. Um, there are some good ones out there again. But like I said, like I do it for a living. So to think that these people need to then go out and vet and look and find the right match, the right fit for them, for their needs, for their social health and well-being in this short amount of time with no experience in having to do that before, I just can't fathom it. I can't fathom it. Long-time Byron Bay resident and retired producer from Byron's community radio station 99.9 Bay FM um, said he said he is with everyone 100%. I feel comfortable. It's the people I see every day. I want them, Ferros, to let us stay. Ninety-five-year-old Kate Smorty is a passionate advocate for the fellow residents, speaking up at rallies, protests, and vigils, organised to raise awareness to keep Ferros open. Well, I think that's awesome. I think it's awesome that they're standing on their feet and they are protesting and they are really, you know, standing their ground to stay in their own homes. But at what cost? At what cost? What is it costing them? It's costing them a lot. So like here, we've got here that um, she's had three cardiac episodes. It's just, it's ridiculous. Okay, so Miss Strand has been a resident at Ferros Village for the past four and a half years and said they have no right to do this to us. She is shocked and angry. It was a big shock to think that they could do that to us, you know. Miss Strand said, in the beginning, residents were pressured to move. They were saying things like, we have to move because they're closing and we might not get a bed if we don't go now. That sort of thing. But that's warned off. Worn off. So again, scare tactics. Trying to put them into a non-compliant facility. She now just wants the conflict to end. I don't think we'd get anything like this anywhere else, the setting and all that. Mr. Swivel said there is a shortage of suitable accommodation across the region and that there is. Um, as I mentioned earlier, a lot of facilities are closing because they couldn't meet the 24-7 RN requirements and a lot of facilities are struggling with staff as well. But this hasn't been raised as an issue for Ferros. So I don't understand why they're doing it when there is a shortage of suitable accommodation. Where are these people going to go? What, how are they going to find somewhere? In the end, the community here and across the country needs more aged care places and not less. Absolutely. The sector is in strife as closures show around Australia, but it is a good example of how aged care needs to be managed and regulated so that community needs come before the commercial preferences of operation operators. Absolutely agree with that statement. It is understood the minister... The Minister's Office is aware and monitoring the situation. Aged Care Minister Annika Wells has been contacted for comment. And as I can see, there's no comment. So I think she really does need to get involved. And they're saying that they're monitoring the situation. Well, cleaning services have been reduced. Doctors have been taken away. They've changed where they usually go shopping. Um, and they're trying to force them into a non-compliant home. According to this article, I am going to actually have a look at that home just to see what the non-compliances are, what they didn't meet. Um, but why isn't she doing something about that? Why isn't she talking out about that? Someone needs to. You know, these people, my heart goes out to them and I really hope that things do work out and I'm going to keep monitoring this situation and, and hopefully we get a good resolution. But like I said earlier, Feroz have a lot to 
answer to or answer for in this particular situation. It's just so unfair. So I hope that was a little bit of information for you. Um, we would really love you to subscribe and like this uh, video um, just to help us build awareness and question what's happening out there in aged care at the moment. Um, all things aged care. We just need to question all things aged care because the whole the whole sector is in crisis and it's not getting any better. It's just getting worse. You know, pay increases happen, hasn't changed anything. 24-7 RNs on site hasn't changed anything. There are still issues, non-compliances, facilities that are not meeting but not being pulled up for not meeting, you know, and then the closures and closures like this particular one that just doesn't need to happen. You know, our loved ones in care deserve to be safe, feel safe, respected and cared for always. Thanks for listening. I'm going to leave it there. So again, please subscribe and like. Um, we really do want to build awareness in, out there in the community around what's happening in aged care. Thanks for joining us today. See you later.